so something that's really interesting in my field this year is that obviously I work on this program called DNA Family Secrets and sometimes people come to us because they want to see if they can trace their donor parents. Now there was a change in the law back in 2005 around people being able to find their donors. So anyone conceived post April 1st, 2005, once they reach 18, they'll be able to find out the identity of their donor parent. So these are going to be the very, very early first things coming through this year and into next year. And I think it's going to be quite an amazing sort of watershed moment for these donor conceived individuals. Um, I'm an astrophysicist, um, so a really, really big event this year for us was the uh, rocket launch which, uh, by SpaceX, which carried the Euclid Space Telescope up into space. That was very, very nerve-wracking for us all, um, but it went really, really well, and we just got the first images that look absolutely amazing. Well, I think a really important uh, piece of work this year has been the science of climate attribution, so being able to say that you know, the probability of a particular extreme weather event being likely caused by climate change. I think that's really changed the way that people think about extreme weather events and makes it a lot more real in terms of the impacts of climate change. So one of the most exciting thing in the field this year is the second brightest gamma ray burst that we caught uh, at the beginning of the year. Uh, 2303078, a, a lovely name, easy to remember. Um, and the reason this one was really cool is because it was over a thousand times brighter than most gamma ray bursts that we find. And it was associated with a kilonova, which is when two neutron stars collide, merge, and create a massive jet that we can then see as a gamma ray burst. And it was spotted by the James Webb Space Telescope. And in the spectrum of the James Webb Sta Space Telescope, we found tellurium. Some crazy elements that are very difficult to make that can only be made in these explosive deaths of neutron stars. I think for me actually one of the highlights for this year has been pulling together a workshop between a lot of different organizations and different partners with very strong opinions that are sometimes opposing and we've been working for a really long time to pull this together and you know, you often think that conservation is actually about the animals or the environment, but so much of it is about politics and people and communication. So actually getting everyone together, sitting in a room, talking really positive about how we can all work together to save a species has been a really, really satisfying thing to do this year. Well, I've really been looking at neurology and neuroscience in ancient Egypt. And I think, you know, the most exciting moment for me was to find out that the ancient Egyptians did have some fundamental understanding of the anatomy and physiology of the brain. Because everybody always thought during the mummification process they would rid the body of the brain because they literally thought it was mucus or phlegm. So during my research to find out that actually they did have some understanding of the brain was very groundbreaking. So I would say that was definitely the highlight of the year for me.